We will not be doing any weather prep. Although on an exterior application, we strongly recommend a sill pan and for you to take expert advice on weatherproofing. And now we will be installing the lower track. You'll need a laser level, shims, and suitable fixings. We'll now be installing the lower sill. You can tell the difference between the bottom sill and the top sill by its lower profile, square cutouts, and end caps. It will also have an up stand, just like the top, and it sits on the opposite side of the spleen. This is a hinge pin. This is the pin that the hinge panel sits in. This will be your opening side. I will now use my laser level to level the sill. Is it imperative that you use a laser level? Along the process, you will see why it is important. As you recall earlier in the video, we checked the whole RO. We found out with this level that this was our high side. We always need to start with the high side when leveling the sill. We're now going to level the sill. We're going to do that using the laser level and my square level. I put a small piece of clear tape on my level so that when I put it down against my laser, I can mark it. I'm going to use this mark and go all the way down the sill to ensure that it's level. Now that the bottom sill is perfectly level, we will use appropriate fasteners to attach it to the floor. After fastening the track down, pull the screws back up and use suitable sealant in the attachment holes. Once the bottom track is installed and appropriate sealant is used, recheck your work and adjust the level as necessary. Each jam will be marked accordingly. This is a hinge side jam. You'll notice on the caps that each side is flush except for one. This part goes against the up stand of the lower sill and also the down stand on the top rail. Notice that the lip that we were talking about is now facing the up stand. 
we're going to now temporarily secure the jam to the wall. This is the top rail. You'll notice that it's quite a bit larger and also has a circular cutout. Next step is to take your laser level, put it on the leading edge of the hinge pin. You want to shoot a vertical line with your laser level to ensure that the top pin is at the correct placement. I'm now going to place the laser level on the front leading edge of the hinge pin. It needs to be directly in the center on the front leading edge. We're doing two things at once here. We're going to line up the hinge pin and also shim down the top rail so that the jam is tight not only to the top rail but also to the bottom track. We're going to now set the frame to where it is directly in the center. front leading edge. We're now going to shim down the top rail so that the jam is tight to not only the top rail but the bottom track. At the same time, maintaining your laser placement on the hinge pin hole. Now that we have plumbed the jam, we will put in our temporary screw once again. We're now going to use a laser level to pinpoint this leading edge of the bottom track with the leading edge of the top rail to ensure that it's plumbed. Remove the temporary screw. Adjust until plumb. Reinsert temporary screw. Shim down the top rail to the sliding door jam, ensuring that it's tight against the rail and also against the bottom track. Recheck the laser. Notice the hammer I'm using does not have a metal edge on it. It has a plastic side and rubber side. Do not use metal hammer on these doors. They will mar the finish. Reinstall the temporary screw. I'm now going to double check my work. At the same time, if there are any adjustments needed, I'll make them at this time, and then I will shim the ends of the top rail.
ensure that you shim the ends of the top rail, both sides, to prevent any shifting. In the magma line system, there are a series of magnets. These attach to the sliding panels. These must now be detached from the block. When all panels are open, each panel will be right in line. I shim directly above that to ensure that it's a solid fitting. Now I will secure the frame through the pre-drilled attachment holes. On the other side, just attach it in the predetermined holes. Now that the top rail and bottom track are secure, we're going to measure each jam and each center on four different points. I've noticed upon measuring that the center is high, so I'm going to back the screw off just a bit so I reach the proper measurement. Headers have a tendency to sag, so any obstruction between the top track and the header will cause it to push down. That's why you'll notice I did not shim any of the top rail. Now we're ready to proceed to step three, installing the hinge panel. 